reallocation of funds for our clients within Design Manager. Now, when handling credits, uh, client credit, client credits and returns, the first and, uh, and most important step is to fully grasp the client's expectation and what you are intending to do, independent of Design Manager. What is the client's actual desire? Do they want to check back? Do they want credit on account? Do they want the funds moved between proposals and invoices, etc.? Having this clear notion of what you're trying to accomplish is really critical in properly implementing the transactions in Design Manager, and they'll also be necessary to explain your situation if you contact uh, our technical support staff. Now, in today's discussion, um, we'll be executing several uh, credit transactions um, manually, but we'll also be heavily utilizing the returns and credits window, which can be used to handle the vast majority of these processes. We'll be working in both uh, standard and professional design manager today, um, and if you want to see an example in either one, if I'm using the other, uh, feel free to ask at the end and I'll be happy to do so. And uh, the returns and credits in design manager standard is located on the returns button on documents and accounting. Professional that's located off of the GL drop-down, returns and credits. And you notice that the windows on each platform are nearly identical. So as we're going back and forth, um, you feel confident that the process will be the same in the platform that you currently are employing. OK, so let's begin. Let's talk about retainers. Retainers are funds received from the client um, to allow you to begin purchasing the agreed upon goods or services um, and or sort of a good faith receipt between your company and the client to ensure that they'll pay you upon finishing the design services. And we routinely receive questions on the applying of retainers, particularly at the end of the project, whether or not the retainer was a agreed upon amount at the beginning of the job or if there were funds transferred into the, re the retainer uh, during the life cycle of the project. So let's see a few different ways of handling retainers, um, refunds, and credits. Let's use our design manager first as our example. So we'll go to our documents and accounting. Now, one of the most convenient ways to utilize a client's retainer is to apply it um, at the end of the job at the final invoice. For example, let's use our Carter's Brigantine Beach Home, and we can create an invoice. And let's say that we are invoicing three of the items. Now notice, I have a $2,000 deposit listed underneath my information note in Design Manager that I now want to apply on the final aspect or at least an invoice throughout the project. On both professional and design manager, you'll notice on the invoice window, along the total region, we have a retainer field conveniently located. All I need to do is input the desired amount. And you can see design manager reduces the balance due. If I click OK, design manager will allow us to process the invoice. Note, however, Say I tried to use more retainer, for instance, 3,000, while we only have 2,000. Design manager will warn me. It's going to say, listen, hey, you only have $2,000 available. If you're forcing through more money than it's applicable, you might be uh, affecting the deposit funds of other areas. So if this window comes up, Note how much do a retainer you are utilizing and do a little review before proceeding. Let's change it back down to 2000. Click OK. OK to generate our client invoice. Now, conceptually, Design Manager has included that retainer right in with the rest of our deposit. As we can see, we had an initial 2,030, and we're adding another 2,000 in for a total deposit amount. So we're reducing the balance due for the client. Oops. Let's just 
up that invoice real quick. Lost my connection there. Sorry about that, folks. Lost my connection for, for a moment. Let's go back, create our invoice. And we'll use our 2000. Go ahead and accept. Now, let's see. Our retainer now amount has gone from 2,000 that we've received to applied on 2,000. We now have an available amount of zero as well. You can also see that on our status window of our project in that we now have on the status tab of the project window, our available retainer is now at zero the professional platform, our status window is located off of the projects window, status, and we can see our deposit amount here. So that's another window you can utilize to check the total available figures for those um, deposits. And let's imagine that we um, did not want to use uh, the retainer in full. We made an error. If we go ahead and credit that invoice, should not have invoiced or something along those lines as our uh, transaction description. I'm going to skip the printing. I'm going to use the hide on reports option. That allows me to not show my credit memo on the client statement and some other reports. I don't need to see, they don't need to see that I've made an error. I'm just kind of creating a perfect audit trail in the accounting, but I'm also hiding it on all of my client documents. Now I'm reversing that invoice, as you can see, and look, we now have our retainer available returned. So one of the most convenient methods of utilizing a retainer is simply when creating the final or one of the final invoices, manually input the retainer amount and Design Manager will take that retainer and, uh, and utilize it appropriately. Let's say, however, that we have already created all of our final invoices and still have a, um, a retainer to use. Well, we could move that retainer to a payment on one of those invoices or invoices. So let's take a look at the professional platform and we'll do so. Whenever manipulating funds in Design Manager, either standard or professional, it's always done through our cash receipt window. Let's go back to our Carter's Beach House. And in the professional, I still have my $2,000 available. So what I could do is move this $2,000 down to one of my existing invoices. Let's take invoice uh, 10,005, for example. To do so, I'm going to tell Design Manager, I'm going to move this retainer by using the Edit button and changing my amount to a minus 2,000. The minus reflects I'm removing this fund. I always put a transaction description, and even though they are optional, they're wonderful for when I'm trying to review transactions that I made, have made months before. Move to payment on, for example, is just fine. And now let's tell Design Manager that we'll apply that $2,000. So if we select invoice 10,005, hit our edit button, we're not paying that in full as we only have 2,000. And we can change that to moved from retainer. So we have a nice description of what transpired. I've got my retainer selected or tagged and my invoice selected or tagged, and let's take a look at our total region. I'm reducing my retainer amount by the 2,000. I'm increasing the payments received. Our net 
receipt is zero, and I have no difference. My amount is going to be zero. My net effect on cash is nothing. I can select a payment type. So it doesn't matter. It's completely irrelevant, again, as I'm not going to be affecting cash. And I can even put a transfer number of retainer, a uh, check number of retainer. Click OK. Note, I have zero total receipts because, again, I'm not increasing or decreasing my cash balance. I'm just manipulating how the funds are distributed. And in professional, I post and accept. I now have a zero receipt that moves the retainer onto a payment on the invoice. And here, I could even go to my client invoices, reprint that invoice, use the show payments option, and design manager indicates that I have allocated the retainer and reduced the overall balance due on the invoice. So that's another very convenient way of moving an existing retainer to an unpaid invoice. And I could have done so to several invoices or even to some new proposals if I wanted to. Lastly, we can use the returns and credits window in a design manager to return or refund the retainer. For example, let's say that the Carters want that $2,000 back at the end of the job as a refund check. Well, let's go back to Design Manager. Let's use our returns and credits window. And again, <clears throat> this window is very convenient to handle 80, 90 percent of the, uh, the common refund uh, client transactions that may occur. And all we need to do is tell the returns and credits window what is transpiring. Well, we're going to create a refund check for retainer. It's for our Carter's Brigantine Beach Home. I can use today's date or whatever I would like to reflect the uh, transaction. The description, again, is our transaction description. This is only for our benefit. And let's say refund initial retainer via check. And then the amount. And let's say that the Carters are taking the full um, $2,000 back. One point of note on this window is, and we try to make it as bold as possible, saying that you're going to input positive amounts. I know conceptually it might seem you want to enter a negative or a minus $2,000 here, but always use a positive value to indicate the amount you are returning, such as 2,000 with no minus or negative sign in the front. If we click OK, Zyman is always going to warn us, would you like to process this credit or return? If we click OK, several transactions automatically occur for us. Let's take a look what just transpired there. Back on our Carter project, we now see Here's our initial retainer, and here is this negative, this reduction of the retainer. And here's even our transaction description that I entered, just so I have a future uh, point of reference. Over here, Design Manager created what we call a miscellaneous cash receipt. This cash receipt is for a positive $2,000. Well, when I took, when I input a negative 2,000 for our retainer, I did in reduce our cash balance. But since I'm utilizing a check to refund the cars, I need to bring that cash back up because I still need to process the check itself. So this miscellaneous cash receipt, as it's called in the software, is used to balance off our cash balance. Because Design Manager also, in our returns and credits wizard, created a specialized vendor code for the carters and has our payable waiting for me to then create a check. And it's the check that I want to use that will reduce my cash by $2,000, indicating my return of the um, retainer. So a point here, all of those three transactions 
the negative retainer, the balancing cash receipt, along with the creation of our specialized Carter vendor and even the payable itself, whereby we can generate the check, that all could be done manually. But our returns and credits window does all the hard work for me and ensures that all my numbers and accounts that I utilize will be accurate. So it really is a wonderful tool to generate such returns. So those are a few methods of handling retainers and how to refund or apply them at the uh, end or during a job. Liz, I could pause for a few questions here before I go into handling deposits, if there are any that have been unanswered. Brad, it looks like we've answered all the questions so far, so you're good. Great. Thanks, Liz. All right, let's keep going. Now, unlike retainers, deposits, uh, as you know, are tied intricately to the items that are contained on the proposal to which we applied the deposit. Refunding a deposit or a portion of the deposit is very similar to um, refunding a retainer. A lot of the processes are exactly the same that we were just looking at for the retainer aspect. But deposits do have a few additional mechanisms um, that we can manually change how uh, they're allocated within a proposal. And we often receive questions um, in technical support on how to do so. So let's review a few of those. First off, let's hop over to our professional platform for a few of these examples. Proposals and documents, and let's use our handy Carter project. Now, if a deposit has been applied to a proposal, and let's say the client rejects an item at a later date, provided the, invoice is, the, the item has not yet been invoiced, you can simply edit the proposal, remove the item, and Design Manager will redistribute. Let's take an example here. Here's our uh, proposal, uh, proposal number three for our Carter Brigantine Beach Home. If we look at our status button, it brings us to our proposal status window, which can also be accessed in the Design Manager platform under Proposals, Status. We see a very similar window. We see that all of our items here are in red, indicating that they have not yet been invoiced. Okay. So let's say that um, the uh, Carters don't want to go with a French dining room table. Okay, and we can see that I've even gotten a 15 out of my entire uh, 39.26 I've received in deposit. This 15.40 of that is allocated to the French dining table. All right. So if I want to remove that item from our proposal and reallocate that deposit. Design Manager does it for me automatically. Simply edit the proposal, select the item. Here's our 18th century French dining room table. Untag it and reprocess the proposal. Okay, so now my proposal amount goes down. My requested and received deposit, notice, my requested has gone down. Why? Because I've now removed a large uh, French table from the proposal. But I still have received that 3926 uh, on check number 546 from the Carters. So what did Design Manager do but, back on our status window, we took the portion of the original deposit that was allocated to the French dining room table and distributed it to the other three items. So now when I go to invoice the client, the total balance due will still reflect the check that they gave me. So design managers automatically redistributing this for me. However, let's take another example. Let's look at proposal number two. And let's edit that one. In our case, let's use another example. Say that um, the sofa was the one being returned. Well, I could uncheck that. No, I cannot. Why? Design Manager is warning me right here. It says this item cannot be removed from the proposal because it's been included on a client invoice. 
This brings us to one of our teaching points of the discussion today. If the item has already gone through the invoicing process, the rule of thumb is at some point you will be making a credit client invoice for that item. And Design Manager is warning us throughout the process that that's what you need to do so. So today's one of the main lessons is if you've already invoiced the item to the client, the return at some point is going to involve a credit memo on that particular item or items. So in this case, I can't just take it off the proposal because I've already invoiced it and utilized some of that deposit. And that's a point that we'll be getting to momentarily when we discuss handling credit um, returns on invoices. Let's take a few more looks here on our deposits. Let me jump back to our design manager platform. And let's say, like the retainer, we can manually move a deposit from a, a given proposal to a retainer, another proposal, or even a payment on an invoice. And the procedure to do any of those is the exact same. So if we take our Carter project and go to our cash receipt window, I'm going to click the show all button, which is going to list all of my proposals. I could say, let's, go, let's take the, um, the 1236 that we received on proposal three and reallocate it. The cars are not going to proceed with this phase of the project, but they want those funds transferred to um, other areas. For example, let's remove the deposit as indicated by the negative And we'll move that let's move it to two places we're going to put it on a payment on an invoice and the remainder we'll put it as a retainer so now I'm indicating that I have if removing the deposit as indicated by the negative I'm going to pay off the balance on invoice 10,003 that leaves me with a difference of 8072. Well, the carters say, hey, let's hang on to that money for future use. Great. That's a perfect example where I can use my retainer to hold that additional refund or that funds to be reallocated. Moved from proposal 0003 select our retainer, now we have a negative deposit and we have our retainer of 8072, our payment on invoice of 115528, our total receipt is zero, our difference is zero. Again, check numbers are relevant, but you could type something intuitive there. I could put in, let's say, prop or something along those lines. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now Design Manager does many things. One, I have removed or backed out my initial deposit from the proposal. As we can see, I requested 1236, and right now I have zero received in total. I paid off my invoice 10,003. It's now in my paid closed invoices area. And I've even added an 87, an 8072 retainer to hold those remaining quote unquote additional funds. So you have full control over manually manipulating how funds are being used in Design Manager by simply using the cash receipt window. And Design Manager won't let you take away uh, uh, an amount that's different from the amounts that you're trying to reallocate. Once that difference is zero, you can manipulate as you want. Finally, let's take a look. We can do a very similar functionality once again with our returns and credits window. Let's use our professional platform and we'll do the same. So let's say that the Carters um, are going to be taking back a, a deposit on, oh, I don't know, let's say proposal two here. Say they're going to be refunding our 968.18. 
In this case, let's say that they are getting it back on their visa. We're going to be refunding the deposit on our proposal, and now we just fill in the rest of the information. What project? Well, this is Carter 1. Proposal number is 002 in this case. Today's date is always just fine. Description. Refund up the deposit. And the amount, in this case, was 968.18. Again, be sure on this window to always have your positive values here. All we need to do now is click OK. Design Manager always warns us before processing. And just like that, it has done so. Now what happens? Well, let's look at our status window again for our proposals. We can see that 968 has been removed um, from the proposal. On our cash receipts, we see the minus 968.18 on proposal number two, refund of deposit. What we don't see in this case is that miscellaneous cash receipt and the operating expense used to generate a check. Nothing here for the Carters, because recall, this time we selected refund on Visa. So all I need to do is lower my cash, because Visa is going to take funds out of my banking institution as it applies money back into the Carter's account. So all I see is a single transaction for the reduction of the money that I have refunded upon the Visa account for the Carters. So deposits, much like retainers, um, allow us a lot of different ways to reallocate simply by editing the proposal and allowing the funds to reallocate automatically in Design Manager. We can manually manipulate deposits by transferring a um, deposit to a payment on an invoice or a retainer or another proposal or any combination thereof. And we can even use our returns and credits window to easily make checks or refund credit card uh, deposits uh, as well. And that's going to bring us to our next phase, which is handling um, the returns on items that have been invoiced. But I can pause for a moment to grab any questions if there are any hanging out there, Liz. Hey, Brad, we've answered them all. So I think you can continue on. <clears throat> Thanks, Liz. Great. OK, well, let's do so. OK, uh, client returns um, regarding invoiced goods. Today's rule of thumb, again, if the item has been invoiced, at some point you're going to be creating a credit invoice at some point. Okay? Um, whether or not the item has been paid in full or has received deposit, that's going to be considered, but it really depends on what the client is expecting. Okay? But that, the, the generation, the creation of a negative or a credit uh, memo or credit client invoice, that reflects the reduction in our revenue, the uh, reduction in the sales tax owed, etc. And it's a really critical um, process. So let's take a couple examples of things that may happen that involve um, uh, crediting goods already invoiced. Let's hop back over to Design Manager Platform. And for instance, let's take an easy one. Let's go to our Pennington home for the Carters. and. Let's take a look at invoice 10,001. Okay. Great. Notice, uh, let's say, for instance, this beautiful California king bed, uh, we sold to the Carters for $6,500. let us say, lo and behold, Mrs. Carter, Mr. Carter doesn't care for it and wants this uh, refunded or credited for us. All right, well, we can certainly do so. In this case, the invoice has no payments on it. There's been no other transactions around it. I would simply and easily credit or reverse the invoice 
entirely using the credit um, the credit function. This is actually going to create a, a reversing credit memo. Um, so the date should be either in uh, the current date or the date of the existing uh, transaction, as long as you haven't paid sales tax on that amount. Because this is going to, whenever the date I select is going to be the period into which my sales tax reduction would occur. Did not like that. Credit. Okay. Again, I'm going to skip printing. In this case, I probably would not use my hide on reports option because I would like to show that I reversed the invoice in full if I gave the statement to um, the carters. That's entirely optional. I'll skip printing just to make our discussion a little faster. And I'll go ahead and process the credit invoice. And now we can see I have simply reversed or backed out that invoice. Now we frequently get, qu get qu queried well, can you edit the invoice or just remove it? Well, not really, and here's why. In worst case scenario, if a tax authority um, decides to audit your company, they're going to be requiring a stringent trail of invoice numbers. And they don't want to come into your office and see invoice, in this case the original was 10,001, with one amount, and then see the same invoice floating around your office with a different amount, either higher or lower. What they're going to do is charge you for sales tax on both of those. So in this case, we have a new invoice generated that has its own numbering system. So there's a clear lineage of invoice numbers that could be used in an audit trail. Secondly, uh, for those of you who um, have larger firms uh, that may have multiple people working in Design Manager, if you could simply edit an invoice, what a um, nefarious individual may do is edit invoice, send invoice 10,001 to the carters for the 10,908, receive payment, edit the invoice, take off the king bed, and now the invoice is $4,000. And the money can easily be redistributed to themselves. So there's a, an aspect of fraud that we're trying to prevent as well to ensure that we always create the credit memo. Okay, that being said, now I can simply recreate the client invoice without our king bed. Very simple. So if the invoice has not yet been paid and we're trying to change it, take items off for whatever reason, simply credit the original invoice and regenerate properly. Okay, well next, let's think of some more complicated um, scenarios. <clears throat> let's say that a, um, an, an item has been invoiced, and, um, or several items have been invoiced, and the client is simply re returning one of those, and they want to keep a credit on account. Or the invoice has already been paid in full, such as invoice um, 10,000 here, we could create a manual credit invoice. For instance, let's go ahead and do so. I'm actually going to create a new invoice by going into my client invoices. Oops. Client invoices. I'm going to use my show all feature because I'm returning my Italian leather sofa, for example, and it's already been invoiced in full, so normally it won't show unless I use the show all. I can override the price and tell Design Manager, listen, I'm going to be refunding this. Oops. As indicated, by a negative amount. I click OK and tag it. We can see Design Manager calculates a negative price and negative sales tax and a negative balance due. Well, what is this doing? Well, it's doing several things. Upon processing and accepting this invoice, I'm going to be reducing my revenue and therefore my total net income so I don't get taxed by the federal agencies upon um, income that I didn't really accrue. I'm going to be getting my sales tax credit since I didn't actually sell this product any longer. And I'm going to create a credit upon the Carter's account. 
So if we click OK, accept our invoice, I now have a credit invoice as indicated by the negative amount. And here, I could go and print a statement for the Carters. which shows our credit balance on account. So this is a wonderful way to, to process a refund for a particular item that's on a invoice that's already been paid in full or that the carters want to hold as a credit on account. We can do the exact same thing using our returns and credits window. So we don't have to conceptually create the credit memo ourselves. Let's hop over to the professional platform to do so. Go back to our general ledger dropdown, returns and credits. And all we have to do, again, is tell Design Manager what are we doing. Well, I'm going to create a credit on account. It's going to be for an invoice. It's going to be for Carter's. Input the date. Refund on account. And now I need to tell Design Manager what's my total amount that I'm going to be refunding, including our sales tax. Now that's something that I might want to gather beforehand. For instance, uh, for the Carters, back on our specifications. I can see that um, I've invoiced, oops, that's not the item I wanted. Oh, that'll work just fine. Say we're refunding the, um, the stone bar table, I can use my status window to get my exact information. This invoice to date tells me the amount that I've invoiced for the merchandise, freight, and the sales tax, and that's the amount of money that I'm going to be telling the returns and credits window. So in this case, it would be 7.25. If we click OK, Design Manager is going to process the return. And now it's going to say, listen, what item are you actually returning? What item is um, the 88.725 for? And we can go down to our stone table, and just like we process manually, we override, input the amount, indicated as a negative for our credit, select, and notice my 887, even though it's a negative, is going to match what I have on my terms and credits window and I can process, print and process the credit. And there we go. Here's our stone table. There's our negative amount and our total balance due. Again, here's our reduction, our credit, our uh, sales uh, tax, and our total amount. Close and accept. And now I have a credit invoice that's going to be listed on the Carter statement. And we can see, the, in this case, the Carters have a few outstanding invoices, and here is our credit of 887, which reduces their total amount due. So I could send this statement, and they can simply pay the 30578 in total and allow me to clear up my receivables with them in one fell swoop. 
one more point on the credit memo. Conceptually and actually legally in accrual accounting, which Design Manager utilizes, the client invoice represents the transfer of ownership. Because prior to that, you or your company really owns that merchandise. It's the client invoice itself that represents the transfer of that over to your client. Flip it around, that credit memo thereby reflects you taking, you or your company taking ownership back of that, reducing your sales, which reduces your net income, and does accrue that, um, also allows you to accrue a sales tax credit as well. So that functionality is really, really critical into maintaining the proper um, accounting behind your business. Okay, let's think of one more example. Let's go back over to the Design Manager platform. Say, for instance, <clears throat> that the project is nearing its completion, or even at the beginning, you might have said to the uh, the client that you offer a, a discount or a certain number of design hours uh, complimentary, or you might give a discount on an invoice as a total. Um, or many other circumstances where we're sort of manually manipulating what we're going to be charging the client. Well, I, what I use is a what I call a refund item to do so. Let's go ahead and process one of those to see what I mean. So if you go to Project and Specifications in, uh, in Design Manager, what I would do is really create a new item. And let's use my example of um, some complimentary design time, for example. I could input my description. Um, complimentary design time is fine. Of course, you can be as verbose or as elegant as you might like. I could set that into my time location. And I would set that to some sales category of, oh, let's say professional service is perfect. And right down here, I could input, say that my, um, my hourly rate is $75. So if I wanted to do two hours, it would be 150 No discount in there. So I'm creating a sell price of a minus 150 and I could even say for two hours. Notice I've got this estimated price of minus 150. If I click OK, I've essentially just created a, um, a conceptual refund item. Now I can include that on a new invoice. For instance, let's see here. Great, I already have some time. I can put some of my other furniture on there. And here, is our complimentary design time. We include that. We can see here's all of our furniture, here's my time, and even at the bottom, I now see my complimentary design services, which reduces the total invoice amount. Now, how does this really apply to our discussion on returns and credits? Well, I use complimentary design time, but this could be refund for, um, for freight disagreement, or it could be, say, that the uh, installers ended up smashing uh, something as they were uh, bulldozing their way through, it with the, through the house with a big couch. Whatever you need to do to reflect a credit or reduction of an invoice to the client, you can simply create a negative item to do so. And behind the scenes, it's reducing your revenue and there go, uh, thereby your overall profit on the job, and it's also reducing the appropriate amount of sales tax as well. So it's a very convenient way to take a conceptual refund and include it into an invoice. And there we go. So with, with, with credits involving items that have already been on an invoice, particularly if they've been paid, you're going to be creating a, a credit memo at some point, either manually, as we have done, or using the um, returns and credits window, which we also displayed. And again, that credit memo is your return of ownership of those products. And we also talked about 
how we can simply credit an invoice in its entirety to uh, remove items that um, are no longer going to be invoiced to the client. And we've even discussed putting in um, a credit item for refunds, complimentary time, or any sort of disagreement or reduction in the total invoice amount. And that brings us um, basically to the end of our uh, Thursday webinar. And um, I can throw it back to Liz to field any questions that might be out there. Hey Brad, we do have a question. And the question is, if you manually create a credit memo, not through the returns and credits function, mm -hmm. does that amount show up as a retainer? Uh, no, it does not. Um, it, should, it will show up as a, as a credit invoice. Here's our example right there in Design Manager. See how this is a negative invoice? That would show even right here as a negative amount. So for instance, say I sent the Carters a statement that includes both my, um, my invoice that we just created along with this credit on it so the client sees a total of 30477 as we saw in our example. They would simply send a check for that amount oops. and I could process it as such. <clears throat> now if um, if the client did want to hold that money as a retainer, um, they could certainly do so. What would we do in that case? Let's do an example. So say I wanted to move my credit invoice conceptually to a retainer. Well, I can. I use my cash receipt window again. Amount's going to be zero as I'm just moving funds around. I'm going to take our minus 955, put it as a retainer, select them both. So now I'm entering in a positive retainer. I'm putting in a negative payment, and which is going to relieve that. My total receipt is still zero in this case. Difference is zero. Now what happens? I end up closing my credit invoice, but moving the conceptual credit to a new retainer. So this goes back to my first point of the discussion today is it all depends on what the client is expecting. If they want to keep a credit memo on account, well, that's our negative invoice. If they want to move that conceptually to a retainer, absolutely. Just do what our last process where is we clean up the uh, credit memo with a negative payment and add a positive retainer. And now it's going to show as a, um, as a retainer for the client. So very good question. It's all about how the client wants to see it or how you or your company wants to maintain it. Design manager can handle any of it. How was that, Liz? Do you have any more good questions like that one? Yeah, that was great, Brad. We actually do have a follow-up question on that one. And the question is, okay, then how do you apply a credit invoice? That was my, uh, that was my other point. Let's back this out. All right, I'm going to remove my retainer, and I'm going to remove my negative payment. Okay, so now I have two open invoices for the Carters. All right, I have a natural positive invoice for goods and services, and I have our credit from the item that was returned. So what I would do, send the Carters a statement under AR reports, statements. I usually keep a report like that on my favorites list here. Run that off for the Carters. So rather than sending multiple invoices, I send the Carters my statement here. They see the credit. They see my new invoice for the goods and services. At the bottom, they see a, no, a total amount due. They're not going to send me a negative check and a positive check. They're going to send me a single check for 30477. I receive that in the mail. 
and all funds coming through Design Manager from clients go through our cash receipt window. Check is right in front of me. It says 304.77 on it. Let's check 5400. Well, that paid both my credit and my current invoice. So my total payment received on these two invoices was 304.77. Total receipt matches the amount of the check. No difference. Hit OK. And guess what? I've now paid off or removed both of my invoices from accounts receivable. So the client saw my credit memo as a reduction in their total amount due and thereby would send me the amount on the statement. And then I can just select all of the invoices to which that check is paying and boom, all of my accounts receivable is now clear for the Carter's Bring a Team Beach Home. Excellent question. Is there another follow up on that one, Liz? No, I think that was perfect, Brad, and I think you answered it well. Thank you. And we have no more questions. All right, great. Thanks, everyone. Again, uh, credit uh, and returns are a complicated um, yet integral part of the design business, and uh, I'm glad that I could go through a lot of the common scenarios today and um, really focus on similar issues and utilizing our returns and credits window. And uh, I'll throw it back to Liz to conclude today's uh, discussion. Thank you, Brad, and thanks again for everyone who participated today. We are going to end things here, but we invite you to email support at designmanager.com with any other questions you have about the software. Um, and feel free to join us next week for our 12 p.m. demo. Um, and you can sign up at www.designmanager.com. Thank you again, and have a great day.